I am playing my own music rather than the Sonic Mania soundtrack, regrettably. Not completely regrettably, but somewhat regrettably, because I'd just rather listen to my own music. But I, I, have, some, I have some things I want to talk about, mostly pertaining to, I guess you could say, the GameCube area era of Nintendo while I'm playing me some Sonic. Um, I never thought I would feel the sort of, like, extremely sad nostalgia that you kind of get with thinking about older pieces of media. And it's not as bad as some people make it out to believe. It's just like, you, you realize that these things that you have had a great time with, you're not really going to be able to experience in the same way. And it's something I've been having to grapple with particularly for the GameCube era, era of video games, which is an era that, oddly enough, I didn't exactly grow up with. Now, or grow up in, I guess you could say. I grew up with many of those games. I grew up with Mario Sunshine. I grew up with Thousand Year Door. I grew up with fucking Double Dash, Wind Waker. All of them. I grew up with all the games you'd expect. Sonic Adventure 1 and 2, of course. There's no way I'd be such a big Sonic fan. I would allow myself to be such a big Sonic fan if it wasn't for those two games fucking plaguing my early childhood experience. But now I'm here. <laughs> as sad as it is to say. But I grew up with those games. I didn't grow up in the era, though. But the whole... The, the feeling that that time period... The, the feeling of that time period, I feel, is perfectly encapsulated in most of those games. Like, whenever I think of Paper Mario, the Thousand Year Door, especially some parts like the, uh, fifth chapter, I think, with the spooky ghost in, uh, what's his name, Duplis? That, that area, that makes me think, like, the first thing I think of is, oh, this was made in the year 2004, which was the year I was born in, funnily enough. Same thing with... Even Mario Galaxy. Mario Galaxy makes me feel the same way. So it's more, it's less of a GameCube era thing, and more of a uh, early 2000s kind of thing, early to mid 2000s, and late 2000s obviously doesn't feel the same way. But even then, some games give me that nostalgia feel. For example, New Super Mario Brothers Wii does not make me, does not give me that distinct nostalgic feeling. New Super Mario DS somewhat does. Super Mario Sunshine and Paper, Paper Mario Thousand Year Door, I feel like I'm being transported back into the early 2000s. And having that feeling whenever I wasn't even, like, cognizant enough to remember it is just weird. Like, why do I feel... I, I just wonder why I feel that way. But... Oh, Pikmin. Pikmin is another great example. Oh my god. But... Oh, Mother 3 as well. Mother 3 makes me... Most, a lot of the songs in Mother 3 give me that feeling of just... Whoop, I'm in 2006 now, which, which, I mean, that makes a lot of sense. Mother 3 was made in 2006. So it all, chronologically speaking, it all lines up. But still, I'm having a hard time grappling with that whenever I wasn't even... I was like two. I was two in 2006. 2006. Just gotta, get, gotta, gotta be right, gotta be technical. I was two. But, I still get that nostalgic feeling, I guess. Some other games as well. Day of Defeat, I didn't even play it. Thinking about it, though, because uh, I used to always watch my dad play that game. Um, Wii Sports? Wii Sports puts me into a completely different era. I don't even, not, it put, it, I feel like I'm being transported into a new, whole new world. I feel like, you know, like the Weather Channel? Wii Sports makes me think of the, like, the the old Weather Channel aesthetic, including the music. I, I think of blue, uh, technology, technology and the color blue, and like, the weather app on the Wii menu, except it's the, it's the color is blue. I need to edit. I'm not going to edit this video, but I really should to get what I'm trying to get across across. But that whole aesthetic with the weather copyrighted weather channel music 
That's what it makes me think of. Like the 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 golf levels, you're in some random you're in an ethereal ass void. God knows why, playing golf and that always gave me such a not scary. It was it just it felt off, not scary, but it felt eerie, I guess you could say. We we sports felt very eerie to me. And that probably sounds odd to say. It's but I think it's just because of I mean, it's virtual people in a virtual world with no context as to why they're there just playing sports. So when, whenever you, if you really decide to think think about it, I don't know why I was a three year old thinking so hard about Wii Sports, but I guess I was. Whenever you decide to think about it, it's just it's like wow, this is kind of a weird scenario to be in. I, why are these Wii Sports guys playing Wii Sports? And then <laughs> are they slaves? <laughs> no, they're not slaves. But it's still something like that always just made me think like what's going on we sports resorts not so much and i think that's because it's grounded in woohoo let's go oh it's grounded in woohoo island whereas originally sports is not grounded in woohoo island so it's it feels a lot more vague and just odd and a little a little creepy if you think about it if you think about it for too long but anyway my, another point I wanted to make is the reason why I know that this is a fucking issue is because the number one thing or maybe not an issue but the reason I, I can imagine that I'm going through a similar thing that uh, everybody's gone through especially for in mo more recent times for like old 8-bit games and now I guess more recently GameCube and N64 games is just the fact that it's got that whole sad tinge to it but that said I'm not one to let the nostalgia get me down I'm not one I, I think about my I think about the nostalgia and I think I don't let myself think damn that makes me sad I can't I can't enjoy this thing the same way ever again because change change is something you can't control right that said, I mean, of course it's still sad, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna obsess over it is what I mean. But, where am I trying to go with all of this? I need to check into the thing, but I don't wanna... These games, I want to, I'm, I'm gonna go back and play them all, obviously, of course I will. But... The notion of nostalgia pisses me the fuck off because there are all big ass corporations ever do nowadays, big ass media corporations, I mean, all they ever do nowadays is appeal to nostalgia and I absolutely hate that because I like looking back at old games and I like looking back at them and saying, man, I'm not going to be able to experience this ever again, but I don't want all of these big ass media conglomerates to be like oh look at this look at this nostalgia nostalgia because that's not helping that's not doing anything all that is is making people who are emotionally incontinent be like oh my god that reminds me of when i was little and then they pay money for that and i mean it makes money but artistically and just for the sake of good media in general not even for art just for the sake of you know making a product th that's actually worth consuming. It's some bullshit, and I don't like that. Whenever I get nostalgic, I think that, that this is something that I loved whenever I experienced it. I loved experience it, experiencing it. Most of the time, especially to, if it was something like Earthbound or Mother, or... Paper Mario even, even though I didn't even, I still haven't beaten that game, still, Majora's Mask, I think, this, this affected me as a person, and even if I may not be able to experience it in the same way, I still have it, and at any time I may experience it, again, in a new and different way, and that's something that's great, because if I were to exp be experiencing it the exact same way over and over again, 
that would be extremely boring. And a, a big issue with things nowadays is that's what that's all they're trying to do is encapsulate the feeling of experiencing it that first way. And not just do they, not just do they pander in such a way, but they get it wrong too. And that's even more aggravating. But nonetheless, I still appreciate those games, and I still feel the nostalgia for them. But I want to preface that I'm no, I'm I will not let myself be susceptible to nostalgia pandering, which is why I'm not going to purchase Super Mario All Stars, even though that didn't exactly pander to nostalgia. It just pandered to people who don't don't know how to make good decisions as a consumer. But the point still stands. But the issue is more ingrained than that, I guess you I guess I could say. I suppose. Because whenever I'm thinking, whenever I'm thinking about what is the situation, what is my happy place? What is my happy place? The one thing that n never fails to put me in the zone of serenity is the most odd thing. But I have a feeling people might be able to relate to me more than I once thought. So I'd like to take a second to describe my happy place, I guess you could say. In a car. I'm in a car. We're on a... It doesn't exactly have to be like a vacation or anything or a road trip. It just, you know, it's been a pretty damn long car ride. Got my DS in hand. I barely know how to read. <laughs> that part's not actually 100 That's not a requirement, but, you know, it's just whenever I first played Pokemon Platinum, I read City as Kitty, so... Just had to add that little point in. Playing my DS, and I am just chilling. And that's all. And the thought that that is... That envisioning that moment can achieve, can put me in a more peaceful spot than imagining anything else besides maybe imagining what a potential future for myself could be like is kind of scary because it's almost entirely dependent on an external piece of media. But at the same time, I mean, it's media that I really like. And also, to be a little more specific, almost every time I'm thinking about playing, like, Pokemon Platinum or Pokemon Mystery Dungeon or something like that, which is weird because I never got past, like, the second city in Pokemon Platinum. And I got a little bit farther in Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, but I still didn't get that far. Oh, also that one SpongeBob game with all the other Nickelodeon characters, and, uh... That's not a SpongeBob game, that's just a Nickelodeon game. And, um... That one Ben 10 game. Those those two as well. I always remember those two. But that's kind of terrifying for me. But, 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 It is kind of terrifying for me that it's dependent on external media. At the same time, however, that's kind of just how it is. Not much I can do to change that as far as I know. Overall, there are just lots of video games, particularly Nintendo games. No idea why it's always Nintendo, 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 but particularly Nintendo games that that are just f fucking good, and especially fucking good in retrospect. And although as a child I liked those games, I didn't beat most of those games. Now, I'm a lot more... I'm a lot more competent as a gamer. I'm a much more competent gamer. If I was five years old, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be able to get past Hydro City. Not Hydro City in Sonic 3. I wouldn't be able to get past fucking Chemical Plants in Sonic Mania. I would not know how to play FTL. And God knows I wouldn't be able to beat Earthbound because when I was five, I couldn't beat Earthbound. I don't know why my parents did this for me. I had some cool ass parents, I guess. They set up an emulator for me. My mom did. She set up an emulator with Earthbound on it for me. 
with the help of one of my uncles. And I tried to play through Earthbound and I couldn't beat it. I resorted to using lots of uh, Game Shark codes and, uh, well, yeah, Game Shark codes, walk through walls, sheets, and shit. I ended up getting a party of like eight, eight characters. I had all four of the normal guys Buzz Buzz, Pokey, Picky, the dog. Dungeon Man. I don't think I actually had Dungeon Man, but I did have all those other guys. And then uh, I remember distinctly remembering one time we were at dinner, and I had a tiny ass laptop I could take with me anywhere I want. So I I would like we just got out of the car. I had to put my laptop up because no bringing laptops into restaurants unless it's a Waffle House. And I distinctly remember I was trying to relay to my family who had no idea what Earthbound was. The fucking, this, I, mind you, this, we're in the middle of a restaurant this entire time. I'm trying to relay to them the fetal theory, the feet, like, earthbound gigas fetus theory to them in the middle of a dinner. I started screaming about fetuses and shit and how they're trying to abort gigas. I don't remember if I got in trouble. I do know that they told me to be fucking quiet. That, I, <laughs> I, I remember that just because of how absurd that is. Like, oh, that spot right there always gets me. I always end up killing myself. I'm so glad I didn't do it there. Oh, no! Man. No clue why I, why I did that. But I do remember how foolish it sounds in retrospect. Um. Those games, though. Especially Earthbound, because I ended up... <laughs> Because I ended up trying to explain fetus theory to them. That's what it, it's. I don't think it's called fetus theory, but you know the the theory that Gygus is a fetus. No idea why. Fucking. I had some issues as a kid. I think. <laughs> why? Why would I? I was like, why was I five years old trying to explain that to people? That's a topic for a different day. But those games have had a much larger impact on me than I had once thought and I don't like it and surprising as well I don't like it and it's surprising okay damage boost time damage boost screw you bro you can lick my ween what other games uh earthbound of course mother 3 as well not as much but cause a little bit as much not completely as much, though. What else? Majora's Mask, Been Drowned. Uh, that made the greatest impression on me. One of the greatest. Uh, Majora's Mask has stuck with me for my entire life, thanks to Been Drowned. Uh, if it was not for that, I probably would not hold that same fondness in my heart that I do have. For my, this is some sort of Stockholm Syndrome, isn't it? Uh, Majora's Mask sc scared me till I pissed my pants. It was... I think the proper term for that, is, terminology for that is scared the piss out of me. Uh, anyway. It scared the... It did, in fact, scare the piss out of me. Uh, left a huge impact on me. Good as shit, though. Made me think of Majora's Mask. That reminds me of all the other creepypasta stories, like the uh, Portal 2... Creepypasta, that's another one. Portal 2, not so much, but still had an effect. Uh, but the Portal 2 still, and you know, the Ratman Dens did. But I'm getting a little off topic now. Uh, the effect they had on me is surprising, especially for how little interaction I had. But then again, also, there were the Let's Players. Aw, oh, fuck, no perfect bonus for me. There were the Let's Players who played through those games, you know, you got Chugga Conroy, mostly Chugga Conroy. There's one smaller Let's Player called Playing With Maui. He, uh, he very much, uh, had an influence. He was, I think he was the first guy I watched play Earthbound, actually. And he was definitely the guy who ma got me into Cave Story. Um, Chugga Conroy, I mean, fuck. That's, uh, you know, he, he's played through everything under the sun. Pikmin, Luigi's Mansion. At the same time, Pikmin and Luigi's Mansion. Wind Waker. I'm trying to think of other ones. He's played everything. I mean, I don't gotta list them all off. If you know who Joe Conroy is, you know you know that he's played literally every single game ever. 
Oh, this is just a great song. You know whenever those feelings distinctly ended? For the, for the games that I hold so fondly? Except for a few, like Lisa and Undertale. Except those don't give me the same, like, time capsule feeling that something like Paper Mario, either Paper, like, the first three Paper Marios, they don't give me that. But m most games, you know when that feeling went away? The year's 2013. And I blame it all on Miley Cyrus. Because she was the one who decided, you know what, I'm gonna start fucking twerking live on air. And I'm gonna dress, I'm gonna, you know, I'm not even gonna get into it. I'll probably get myself cancelled. But you know, you know what she did. You know what Miley Cyrus did, we all do. She ruined everything. It's all her fault. After she did that, what happened? Fucking Call of Duty Ghosts? Oh yeah, Black Ops 1. Uh, especially playing zombies, like split screen zombies with friends. Black Ops 2, 1 and 2. What else? Uh, what, what got ruined? Well, what? After she did that little stunt, Skyrim got released eight times. Uh, Sonic Boom came out. <sighs> the fuck else do I have to say? Sonic Boom came out. Uh, my parents got divorced. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's her fault. Maybe it was the maybe it was the divorce and less Miley. No, it was definitely Miley Cyrus. Um. Anything else? I don't know. Point still stands. Fuck you, Miley Cyrus. You ruined everything. You, you revoked my innocence. I had to watch you lick a fucking sledgehammer. And ever since then, I've just... I've been in eternal torment. And... Now I have to make a video where I talk about how... Thinking about a car ride where I'm playing goddamn Pokemon Mystery Dungeon brings me more serenity than thinking about financial stability or a good future for my children. Uh... Then there's Animal Crossing music. New Leaf. Brawl. Brawl and New Leaf. Yes, a New Leaf gave me, uh, gives me the time capsule feeling a whole lot. Animal Crossing in general gives me the time capsule feeling. Brawl, on the other hand, it's both timeless and also a great reminder of the past. When was that released? 2008. Why do I know? I know the shit off the top. This is how, how I really know that everything's gone wrong in my life. I know the release date of Brawl off the top of my head. Well, at least the release year. What's the re what was the release date? I want to say, like March. I'm probably wrong about that. Regardless, Animal Crossing also holds a special place in my heart, but not as much as simply the thought of an old ass GameCube game. Just the GameCube era in general, and also Earthbound and Mother. They they're in there too, and the po every Pokemon game, like. Platinum, Emerald, Soul Silver. Every time I think about Soul Silver, my heart skips a beat as if I were thinking about a lover. Except I have no lovers. I've literally. I can't remember the last time I've had a crush on anybody, male or female. I know I'm sexually attracted. I blame. That's probably porn's fault. I know I'm sexually attracted to women, but also. The, la the, la the last time I felt a. A single morsel of even crush was like what? Ten years ago. I don't, I, I don't know what that means. That's a that, that's another topic for another day. Uh, that's kind of terrifying. Am I? Do I need to? Like I don't watch pornography that much, but like, damn. What does that mean? Thank you, Animal Crossing music, for breaking the tension. Animal Crossing has some great music. I am on an ADHD tangent. I... The crux of what I was going to say before I went off into ADHD world was that... 
I have some renewed vigor, reinvoked enthusiasm for playing these games. I would love to play through all of them. Uh, I've been playing through some newer games recently that I haven't played before, like Metroid. But those games, you know, it's fucking Metroid. Metroid is so good. Met uh, Zero Mission rocked my socks. Samus Returns is also damn good, surprisingly. It's, it's a bit more, uh... It's a bit more linear, but still quite nice. But I want to play some newer games. Oh, some newer games. I'm such a dumbhead. Some some of the older games that I've already played before, and uh, kind of think about those those guys in the retrospect and such. And I'm fixing to do that shortly. And you're gonna be like, wow. And then I'm gonna make a retrospective video and get trillions of views. And you'll all be so impressed. You'll be like, wow, Marloin really made it. Look at him. He's got. He's gotten more views on that video than the Yoda video. Thank God. Finally, he did something better than the Yoda video. Speaking of which, um, any ideas for the Yoda video? Because I'm shit out of ideas. I'm, I have no idea how to make Yoda a likable protagonist after he beat his wife. Actually, I do have a few ideas. I'm not going to spoil them here. But let's just say I have a few ideas. I just, you know, I don't... I don't want the protagonist to be somebody who just brutally beat his wife for taking a shit in his toilet. That's not, uh... You know, that, that's what that's what we, we here in America like to say, not very good. I'm, no, I'm silent. Sonic Adventure and Sonic Adventure 2, especially the Sonic Adventure 1's Chow Garden, and to a lesser extent, Sonic Adventure 2's Chow Garden, give me a sense of nostalgia. I, I, there must be a sort of gray gradient to this thing. At the, at the top most potent nostalgic feelings, you've got... Paper Mario... Oh wait, there's there's a thing over there. You got Paper Mario, Pokemon, uh, before Gen 5, even part of Gen 5. Gen 5 got, has some nostalgia, but mostly before Gen 5. Brawl, especially. Wind Waker, even though I haven't played Wind Waker once in my life. That's up there. Thanks to, thanks to Let's Plays. Let's Plays are definitely a, a huge part of that. And like, Half-Life 2 and Portal. That's something else odd. Lots of lots of games. Well, not, I mean, not too odd. Lots of games I have associated with other p pieces of media simply because my ass can't just be satisfied with playing a game. I've also got to be doing something else, mostly just watching something. For example, Deus Ex, extremely heavily associated with Part Five and Four of JoJo in that order, um, because I rewatched both of those while. Playing through Deus Ex. Still haven't beaten it. About to have to rewatch part 5 again, I guess. Whatever. <laughs> I really, I, I don't know why, but... They just, it's like, uh, it's like strawberry and gouda cheese. They go together, you don't think they'd go together well at all. But they go together so damn well. In my case, at least. Other things like that, other pieces of media. Uh, Metroid and video game retrospectives about... Majora's Mask and Mother. I don't know why. I watched like 10 in a row about Majora's Mask. I don't know why. I just can't get enough of people talking about that damn game. But whenever I get to the Water Temple, I can't even beat it myself. I still don't know what that means either. There are so many questions. So little answers. I'm so glad that I'm not listening to the game's music. Because every time I get there, I get the speed shoes and it cuts off the Studiopolis music. And I get so pissed off because the speed music is not even like a third as good as how good the damn music in Studiopolis is. Why is it? Oh my god. No! No! I'm not gonna be able to click out, am I? Oh, damn it. No, that's not good. Looks like we're stuck listening to Animal Crossing music. Which is awfully... Like... Did I not... Fuck me, I didn't. Didn't even get the Chaos Emerald. But it's awfully, like, somber and c contemplative, contemplative at times. 
I, I wouldn't expect it to be so just melancholy, I guess. But that's kind of how it is, and I get it. I like it as well, because you wouldn't exactly expect it. But at the same time, oh no, I need to, no, no. Okay, thank God. But at the same time, I, I definitely enjoy that. That unexpected melancholy gives the perfect tone, especially for Animal Crossing. That's something that just works very well. Majora's Mask left a pretty good impression on me. Okay, so Paper Mario didn't leave that much of an impression on me. But it gives me the nostalgia feel. Majora's Mask, when, uh, never beat it. The first time I played it, I didn't even get to the, like, I didn't even get to the, uh, Woodfall Temple. I almost got to it, but I did not get to the Woodfall Temple. Uh, Mario RPG, I got up to past where you unlock Geno. Double Dash, I never beat, but I played a whole lot of. Um... Not sure much of what else, but you get the point. Uh, Halo 4. Why particularly Halo 4? I don't know. Everybody says Halo 3 is better. But Halo 4 is the one that left an impact on... Probably because I played that one more. Whenever I was little. I mean, that's, that's when you really know it was bad. I was 7 years old whenever Halo 4 was popular. Ugh. Fucking Zoomer. Imagine... Soul Silver also. Uh, what's a what's a little what's a little less effective onto me? Uh, New Leaf, X and Y, Black to White too, because those were I was younger, I guess you could say. Uh, Undertale, and I was, I mean I was older. I was a lot older whenever I whenever I beat Undertale. That was like oh, not even a year ago. Whenever I first fully completed Undertale, except for Genocide. I'm never doing a Genocide run because. Well, I mean, I really could if I wanted to. It's just fiction. But, you know, I like the little happy ending that you get if you just don't touch the game ever again. So, you know, I'll just do that, I guess. But if if Undertale wasn't as good as it was, it would have left a lot less of that nostalgic impact on me. But, considering how good it was, and since I watched all as many videos as I could, all the videos under the sun about Undertale, well... Undertale itself, none of that other fandom shit. I'd never, never got into the fandom shit because you know they scare me, as they do most people. Same thing with Sonic. Sonic's fandom, well, Sonic fandom hasn't gotten as bad recently. I mean, you got people like Cyber Shell and he, I, you could oh, Tails gets trolled, things like that. Oh, that's part of the fandom, yeah. But that's quality shit. Cyber Shell makes high, extremely high quality videos. And Tails Gets Trolled is the greatest manga I've ever read. And yes, I'm going to call it a manga. <laughs> That's so stupid to call it that. But it's a lot better than calling it a webcomic. Whenever I hear webcomic, I think about Homestuck. And yes, I know Toby Fox, the creator of Undertale, was quite involved with Homestuck. But you know who else was involved with Homestuck? A incessantly annoying fandom. Five Nights at Freddy's as well. Which also gives me that sort of... Um, impactful nostalgia yet yet I was much older compared to the time capsule nostalgia games feel and that's partially because god damn those teaser those teaser images flipped me the fuck out the teaser images scared me way more than the actual games did like that one teaser with foxy in the middle of a red foggy abyss just staring at you like you're in that that farm area in transit in the map transit in call of duty that had a way bigger impact on me than actually playing through Five Nights at Freddy's 2 did. Same thing with just Withered Bonnie in general. The fuck's up with Withered Bonnie, man? Still haven't play, uh, even played Five Nights at Freddy's 2. Actually, I think I played it on the phone. But the phone, mobile ports don't count. In my book, mobile port, no, mo no mobile port ever counts. Except for that one time I played Metroid Zero Mission entirely on my phone with an emulator. That counts because that wasn't actually a mobile port. That was just me being thrifty. But it's okay because I hacked my DS and then I played it that way. And that actually counts. Because it's on actual hardware. 
So this music, this music kind of got that uh, melancholic vibe to it. SCPs, kind of. Thing is, I only recently got into SCPs. I always knew about 173, but I never knew where he came from. I just knew he was that creepy statue. Uh, I remember seeing him in a PBG video, and I was like, man, that sure is creepy. I'm never going to look at that ever the fuck again. My god. And the, gra the, no, the graphics were noticeably much better than they actually were. I wonder why that is as well. If you have an answer to any of these I wonder why statements, please tell me. Oh, fuck. Let's... No! Okay, I'm gonna have to cheese this shit. Uh... I'm not sure what else... Not, not much else, but, um... I'm definitely gonna play through Lisa the Joyful, and then I want to make... I want to actually make a video about Lisa. Maybe a review, I don't know. Go watch Nero! Uh... Just go fucking watch Nero. He's a great YouTuber. Is Nero the reason why I first watched... I think Nero... Nero must be the reason why I first got into Lisa. Either that or Squatch Game. It's Nero and Squatch Gaming. They both, they all made, I don't fucking remember. Just go watch Nero, go watch Squatch Gaming. They're great. I'm gonna play through Joyful, and then I'm gonna make a video about that. Then I'm gonna, then there's quite a few games. I wanna finish Thousand Year Door. I want to play through the Mother series, but I wanna start with Earthbound and then play back through the entirety of Mother 3, just cause. What else? Thousand Year Door. I mean, I've been playing that on and off for a while. Uh, other games? Not many other. No, those are all the games I can really think about. But you know, the the big point is that damn, I got the I got the nostalgia bug hard. That, but I'm not gonna. My another point is I'm not gonna let I'm not gonna let anybody do shit with that. Fuck you. I'm I'll just go consume all that media on my own. I don't need you rehashing all my all that shit. Go make something new. Why don't you do that, please, Nintendo? Did that with Odyssey and Breath of the Wild. Thank you for that. Uh, maybe not. Maybe I shouldn't be yelling at Nintendo as a whole. Game Freak, you guys go make something fucking new. Gen 8 was like almost new, but then it wasn't. Uh, <laughs> so uh, almost. That's one frustration I have, is re the reliance on indie games for any any fucking modicum of something nice. Or ROM hacks. Uh, why don't you go make a good Pokemon game for once? That would be cool. Anybody else that I want to scream at? Valve! Do something. Next, I mean, they did do something. They, they did Half-Life Alex. They're getting... Valve's getting to work, so... I don't have much to yell at them. Just, you know, can you... Can you uh, uh, stop being radio silent. People actually like hearing what you have to say about your progress on game development. Uh, not saying anything at all because you don't think anybody wants to hear it is not how it works. Especially because people do want to hear you. So, uh, get on that, Mr. Newell. Mother 4. Um, please? That's actually a joke. I think Mother 3 is quite nicely wrapped into a bow, but at the same time, that would be badass if the Mother 4 fan game was still Mother 4. I know that they changed it to, to not get copyright struck, but come on. Strictly because of that one guy lighting a cigarette with, a P with his PSI, please. You could have just relabeled PSI as something else. That's so disappointing. At the same time, also... Shigesato Itoi himself said, I want the fans to make Mother 4. So, uh, the fuck are you doing, guys? You really shit the bed on that one. <laughs> I'm being so mean, I'm sorry. Anything else? I don't know. It the big the big thing that I have an issue with is just Why did the 2010s have to ruin everything? Why did everything have to go to shit? Every, why did- why? I- I know a few reasons that I'm not gonna get into because then I would have to lecture for eight hours and I would probably get cancelled immediately afterwards. But like... Why? Why? Come on. 
It didn't have to be like this. It could have been so much nicer. Come on. Please. Stop. Thanks for all the points, Tails. Furthermore, I really like Ultimate Chicken Horse. Complete non sequitur, but I really like it. It's a fun game, good gameplay, very competitive, and I'm good at it. That's my favorite part. I'm good at it. There's not too many multiplayer, especially like competitive, not like competitive as in like, we're playing Overwatch, motherfucker. If you don't, if you play as Torbjorn, we'll sue you. No. Competitive as in just like the game is founded upon competition. Uh, one of those games. There's not many of those that I'm too particularly good at. Uh, I'm shit at most FPS games, except for TF2. I'm, I'm all right at TF2. Like Rainbow, I'm absolutely... It's sad how bad I am at the game. But yeah, mo most FPS games I'm not too good at. I'm good at Minecraft, PvP, but you know, I'm just good. I'm not like, I'm not excellent. Different from excellent. Different, different, emph different emphasis means different meaning. But then again, also, I could have just said excellent. Whatever. Point still stands. I am not that. And, uh, that's bad. But platformers, I'm pretty good at. And RPGs, I mean, it's an RPG. What do you expect? I fucking love Sonic Mania. It's such a good game. I'm so glad Sega decided to let the fans do a single, even just a single game. The fact that this game happened. Again, go watch Cybershell. And Narrow and Squatch Gaming official. And um Nitro Red for that matter. Go watch him as well. I mean, I know only th like four people are gonna watch this video, and two of those people are probably probably already subscribed to at least one of the people I'm talking about. But still, come on, good ass YouTube channels, and uh, most of them are have a, have at least played a hand in kind of giving me uh, inspiration. I don't want to say inspiration because. Although technically it would be, I'm, I can't really say inspiration until I actually get something done. I can't say they inspired me to make this video, because they didn't inspire me to make this video. If they inspired me to make a video like this, then I would, like, that, that's, no, that, that's not how inspiration works. That said, they have given me the motivation, and I guess you could say inspiration, to go ahead and actually take a crack in, at getting some of those types of videos done rather than just streaming everything. Chugga Conroy as well. And that's more on the Let's Player side. But then again, that's also not just inspiration, but entertainment. And also, he exposed me to all these types of games. Most of them, at least. Uh, if it wasn't for Chugga Conroy, I wouldn't know about Pikmin. If it wasn't for Chugga Conroy and playing with Mui, I wouldn't know about Earthbound. And Chugga Conroy, if it wasn't for him, wouldn't know about Mother One. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have known that you could play as Luigi in Mario Galaxy if not for Chugga Conroy. I wouldn't have known about Wind Waker, or I wouldn't have known about everything about Majora's Mask except for the Ben Drowned part if it wasn't for Chugga Conroy. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't know about Mario RPG, one of my favorite RPGs ever. Same thing with Thousand Year Door. Same thing with the original. Same thing with Paper Mario. Basically, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have played half the games that I have. And if it wasn't for Earthbound, I also wouldn't play, not half the games, but um, quite a few of the games that I like. Particularly Undertale and Lisa, because those were direct inspirations. They're directly inspired by, I should say. Earthbound was a direct inspiration for both of those games. And you can really, you can really tell. You can tell for sure. Uh, Lisa's a lot less subtle with it, but you know, you can, okay, what the fuck was that? <laughs> what? Lisa's a lot less subtle with it, but you can still tell. 
I like the Tomodachi Life. Tomodachi Life's a great game, and I kind of have the nostalgia for that. Especially, like, the music gives me the same kind of uh, time capsule feeling, but it's a lot more modern of a game, obviously. But that makes me think more like of going to the mall or something. This, this, shot, this song does. That's still a part, though. Uh, I'd say early to early to mid 2000s culture is what it all reminds me of and That's something that although it wasn't too particularly special and in some cases you could say that it was in fact negative It was the it was what I grew up around and what I grew accustomed to and in the era I'm in now I Think to myself damn how much I would rather just be in the 2000s again. Glad I figured that out and got that off my chest, but we still got one more zone to go before I wanted to end this video, so I'm going to continue talking about that. It really took me 40, 40 minutes just to get focused enough to figure out what I wanted to actually say about the topic I started this video with. Um, They prescribed me with Adderall, but I don't take it as often as I think I'm supposed to. That's okay, though. I don't want to get addicted. I do know Adderall is quite prone to making people addicted, so I'd rather not do that. Final thoughts. Um, any ideas for what games you guys would like to play? Anybody who watched this far, if you give me ideas to what to pl for what to play, I will give you a heart on your comment as a little reward for the fact that you actually watched this far, which probably hasn't happened. What else? Um... Do, do I want the fire? Yeah, I want the fire. Any other games that I would like to talk about? That I'm that because I gotta take I gotta, gotta take a second to actually think about the game before I can just talk about them. Uh. Hmm. Sonic Colors. I played the Sonic Colors. That was a, a bit more 2010s ish though. I mean, it came out in 2010, I think, or 2011. One of the two. Black Ops 1, especially, especially the menu theme for multiplayer, where it's like, dun 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 That, fucking love that. Uh, Minecraft, of course. I love Minecraft. Everybody loves Minecraft. It's played a part in everybody's childhood, of course. I'm not going to be able to shut up about Earthbound. I love Earthbound. One of my favorite games ever. I love it so much. I love Earthbound. I love Earthbound. And I would say more about it, but I want to save all the thinking about Earthbound for the Earthbound video. Because if I start thinking about everything I like about Earthbound now, I'm eventually going to forget about it. And then I'm not going to be able to write that shit down for the video. Because you know I have to write that shit down. There's no way I'm going to be able to do something freeform like this. And actually get everything I want to get across in a timely and well-paced manner. I want those videos to be of actual quality. I, I'm making this video for the fun of it. I'm making those videos for for partially for the fun of it but I'd say it's less for the fun and more for the motivation like for the not challenge but you know just like for the fact that it's something I can create about something that is near and dear to my heart and not because it making it would necessarily be fun but because making it would still be rewarding nonetheless. That's a good way to put it. I hope it's a good way to put it. Maybe I maybe I got it across to you, maybe I didn't. I love Sonic Mania as well. And I love Majora's Mask. And Paper Mario. Even though I still haven't... Actually, no, I still haven't beaten a single one of those games. I did get kind of far. I think like a third of the way through. And yes, I do consider... I said that I was kind of far. I didn't say far or very far. I said kind of far. That's like a third. You have three different words of distinction for how, for how much progression you've made into a game. I think kind of fits as one of those... Uh, one of those words to... For the distinction... 
I hate all the power-ups. I actively avoid power-ups whenever I'm playing this game with music on. That's how good the, that's how good the music in this game is for me at least. I don't know about you guys. No, okay, damn it. Come on, Tails. Come on, Tails. Let's go. Tails. Tails. Tails, motherfucker. Tails. 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 <laughs> okay. Uh, not just you gotta be fucking kidding me, Tails. You're really, you're shitting the bed again. Come on. Come on. No, up, 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 Tails. Come on. Go up. Go up. Upwards. <laughs> there we go. 50 rings. All right, supersonic. And this the music for Supersonic is still alright. I still prefer the stage music. That's one reason that's one thing I love about Sonic 3 Complete is that uh the music you can just change it to all be the stage music. Or the stage music with faster and that's it. That change is so awesome. Thank you, uh guy who made Sonic 3 Complete because you made this world just that much better by doing that. Not that much better. You didn't rescue any hostages or uh, cure cancer or whatever. But, you know, made it better for me. And I'm the only perspective I have to go off of immediately. So, you made the world better, I guess. <laughs> Anything else I have to say before this level's over? And I end the video. I like video games a whole lot. And... Although I do like them as much as I do, I need to make sure that I have other things going on as well. And for the most part I do. But it could still be better. Pikmin. That's what's been lingering in my mind this entire time that I wanted to talk about. Pikmin. Oh, Pikmin. Pikmin, Pikmin, Pikmin. You make my heart flutter so. I love Pikmin so much. And I actually did beat Pikmin. I beat both. I beat both fucking Pikmin games. What the shit? Uh, now, to be fair, uh, beating Pikmin 2 is, like, half the game, but still, I, I beat the Titan Weevil as well. I didn't 100% it, which is kind of a requirement for Pikmin 2, but, I mean, that's a modern, like, a requirement for me now. I was good enough with just beating the Titan Weevil, I guess. And same thing with Pikmin 1. I'm surprised I did that. I was, like, 7 or 8. How the fu how the fuck did I get that done? Plants vs. Zombies is amazing. So is... Not Plants vs. Zombies 2. Fuck EA. Playing Sonic Mania, but every time I jump, I say, Fuck you, EA. Oh, no, I'll do that with PVC. But yeah, it was Pikmin. And all other games from the 2000s era. The 2000 era game, 2000s era games... Early to mid. And for some late... They hit me in my they hit me in my nostalgia bone, scratching an itch that no other game can. But I'm not gonna let the nostalgia. I, that's I have to keep reemphasizing that. Not gonna let the nostalgia hit me. So uh, glad I got that all off my chest. I hope that my rambling wasn't too annoying and if you actually did watch all the way to the end Jesus Christ and like damn well yeah that's all I gotta end the recording now so uh see ya